Hey everybody, it's Joe from Greenlight Sound and GreenlightSound.com, and today we've got a video on one of the common stumbling blocks in mixing, and that is getting your kick drum and bass to work together. The main problem with getting those two instruments to work together is that a lot of their sound occupies the same frequency range, and a lot of mixing is really a product of getting each instrument to sit in a specific spot frequency-wise along with controlling their dynamics. So they fight for that space down there in the low end and it's tough to get them to work together. So one of the one of the things you can do is sort of carve some EQ frequencies out on each instrument to get them to work together. But another good option is to sidechain your kick and bass. And you have to decide right off the bat which instrument you want to sort of win the battle here. Do you want your kick to be the dominant instrument or do you want your bass to be the dominant instrument? And as long as you're okay with the kick transient being heard and then sort of fading out, then you can use this side chaining trick where the bass is um, has some dynamic reduction that's triggered from the kick drum through a side chain. One of the ways you can do this, if you've got a stock compressor, I have right here, Studio One stock compressor, I'll enable it. So I've set it up in side chain here. I've sent a copy, or sorry, sent a send to its side chain from the kick drum. So basically what's happening is every time the kick input is exceeding the threshold that I set, then the bass is reduced by whatever amount um, that I set, depending on your set settings and ratios. So here's the, I'll bypass it, and here's the kick and bass together without any sidechain compression. Okay, so I'll enable it here, set the side chain up, uh, drop the threshold a little bit, and you'll hear what happens when the whole signal is compressed through the side chain. Okay, the first thing I wanna do, first of all, I don't hear much difference. That's because my attack is a little bit high. I wanna bring the attack all the way down. I want this compressor to react instantly to that initial transient of the kick drum. The release we can tweak depending on how much you want the signal to duck out or how much of that transient you want to come through. So I'm gonna leave it with about a 16 millisecond release, the attack as fast as I can go. I'm gonna adjust the threshold, raise the ratio just a bit, adjust the threshold until I get the gain reduction I want. And that works well if you've got good monitors or headphones, you can hear that low end of the kick drum come through a lot better than it did initially without the sidechain compression. Now the biggest problem with this is you're ducking the entire signal. So you can hear that bass part pump a little bit. That volume change is audible. In the context of the entire mix, you might not hear that. So if this is your only option, it can work. But to me, that's a little bit heavy handed. Here it is again, without the sidechain. And now listen for that sort of pumping you hear the bass. You definitely hear the low end of the kick come through more, but that pumping is annoying. So let me show you a different option. Option number two would be to use an active or dynamic equalizer. And the advantage of this is that you can side chain one band of the equalization and leave the rest of the signal of the bass part untouched. So if I enable the first band here, I'm gonna right click on it, enable the side chain, set my attack, for extremely fast. Uh, that same sort of release of about 16 or so milliseconds. And you'll hear, you'll see rather, the EQ only kick in and cut out the low end when that kick drum is hitting. Let me enable the plugin. I can tighten up the cue. I can expand the range of the dynamic EQ. Bypassed. That transient's coming through on the kick, but the low end kind of gets lost in the bass.
And you can hear in that one, that low end of the kick drum come through again. It's not really fighting with that bass part. I'm really only triggering signals that are below about 100 hertz. So it's not really going to affect that sort of uh, the amp sound of the bass, that upper mid range that really helps the bass cut through. Another option would be to use a multiband compressor. Like here we have Fab Filters Pro MB. I set up a, a band right here in the low end. I drag the crossover point to say about 100 hertz or so. Uh, I have to open the expert panel here and hit external sidechain. Enable the plugin. And you can adjust how far you want a range to go, let's say about 8 dB or so. Again, fast attack, meet and release, and we'll adjust the threshold as it plays. Bypassed. If you listen closely, you'll hear that that low end of the kick sort of gets lost in there and engaged again. Listen to the very lowest, that, that really deep sub of the kick. It's a subtle difference, but if you've got a subwoofer, nice headphones, nice monitors, you'll hear that. You'll be able to hear that bottom end come in. It will clean up and tighten up the bottom end of your mix so you don't have these canceling or competing frequencies between the kick and the, and the bass guitar. Um, you can use side chaining for a bunch of different purposes, but this is one of the most fundamental, getting that low end correct in your mix. So again, there we go. We could use our compressor and duck the whole signal. This is the free option in that uh, a compressor within your DAW will be able to do this. Some DAWs have multiband compressors like Studio One built in, some don't. Another option would be to use an active EQ. This is a Melda Productions M Dynamic EQ. You could use McDSP's AE 400 or 600. It will do the same thing. Um, Waves has an active EQ that would work as well. And Fab Filters Pro MB, which I highly recommend. It's a great plugin for many purposes, but it works great for this purpose as well. To me, this is actually the most natural sounding and has the most control of the three options. And that's how you do it. You go about side chaining your kick and bass so that that low end of the kick comes through and you cut some of that low end of the bass out only when the kick is triggering the side chain. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.